everyone, Jimmy with Jim's Review Room. Many of you guys overseas have been asking me about this speaker for several months now, and have had my eyes on it since. This speaker has yet to be available in America until recently, and I'm pleased to test this and see how it even stacks up with what I think is the best of the Bluetooth speakers on the market, the Bose SoundLink 3. And if you guys look at the information in the video, the JBL Extreme looks to compete with many of the heavyweights in the Bluetooth speaker market. As always, you can check updated pricing in the video description below. I put a link in there for your convenience. But getting straight into this, without further ado, I'm here to help you make a purchase decision. Welcome everyone to Jim's Review Room. As always, going over the physical features first, this is a very decent size. 9 inches wide, 5 inches tall, and 4.8 inches deep, all while weighing in at 4.7 pounds, making this slightly bigger and just slightly heavier than the other two heavyweights, the UE Megaboom and the Bose SoundLink 3. Now, although bigger and heavier, it's still mobile, just not as easy in someone's bag. JBL does include a simple carrying strap, attach this to both sides of the speaker for over-the-shoulder carrying. But being big and heavy isn't such a negative trait if you're looking for big sound. You can see this on either side with the massive here bass radiators when music is being pushed. But before getting into sound, the top features your very sturdy, very tactile Bluetooth pairing button, volume down, power on and off, and to the right is what they call the JBL Connect feature. You can chain other newer JBL speakers like another Extreme, the Flip 3, or the soon to be released Pulse 2 and have those basically play at the same time from the same source, offering more room filling music or have music in different parts of the house. Volume up is to follow with last the pause and play button. Now rest assured here, everything on the Extreme is rock solid from my testing, no flexing metal frames, seams are tightly assembled, and materials all around looks top notch. But besides being built tough, it's also rain and splash proof with a very rugged and tough nylon braided like exterior. You just can't submerge this underwater. So no dropping this into the lake or into the pool either intentionally or accidentally unlike uh, the UE Megaboom I tested a few months back. That however can be immersed into water up to 1 meter for up to 30 minutes. Of course the Bose SoundLink 3 can't get wet at all. Now going to the bottom of the extreme, just enough wide rubber feet are provided to prevent the speaker from shaking off the table, and behind this orange zipper here are all of your physical connections. Now I do have to admit, this is a bit tight the very first time trying to connect the wires, but after the second or third time and then realizing, pressing the upper flap was actually key. To the left is a micro USB port for servicing only, I tried charging this with a USB cable, that didn't work, a 3.5mm input, two USB ports to charge two devices simultaneously, such as your smartphone and or tablet, just to keep the music going and playing, and last to the right is is the power port for the supplied wall charger. Indeed, this has a large charging brick for a Bluetooth speaker, but inside is a massive 10,000 milliamp battery. The Extreme claims it can be powered for up to 15 hours, and with my personal testing, the same test that I do on all my Bluetooth speakers, leaving this playing at 50% volume as a middle-of-the-road standardized test, the Extreme lasted me a crazy 18 hours and 16 minutes to be precise, until it basically shut off on me. And when compared to the UE Megaboom, although it's claimed to have 20 hours, my same test yielded 17 hours and 30 minutes of on time. Regardless, both of these speakers does ridiculously well in battery performance compared to what's out there. Now in regards to recharging, JBL claims 3.5 hours, I was able to achieve from a dead battery to full in 3 hours and 20 minutes as shown in the video. So that's everything physical wise uh, about the Extreme here. I do admit it is missing NFC or near field communication for easy pairing, a feature that I think is really underrated but highly convenient for Android users. Now, one last thing before doing the sound test there is a built in speakerphone option. JBL claims to offer noise and echo canceling technology. But let's do a real test here. Here's a sample. Hello? Hey, it's me. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, got another. Um speaker I want you to test the speakerphone on. So uh, how do I sound right now? What do you think? I sound a little bit muffled, but you're verbally clear at least. A little muffled? Dang, that sucks. I'm about maybe um, three feet away from the speakerphone right now. Let me step back a little bit. Maybe that's, uh, maybe I'm a little too close. Uh, you never know. But uh, I'm about maybe five, six feet, five, six feet away from the speaker. How do I sound right now? 
Uh, you sound a little bit echoey, like your voice is kind of be throwing off the walls in the room, possibly. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. I mean, you, you're understandable, but it just sounds a little bit echoey. Okay. All right, then. Well, uh, that's it for the test real quick. Thank you very much for your time. All right. No problem. All right. Bye. Yeah, bye. And now to the moment that you've been waiting for, I'll play several songs and we'll be switching back and forth from time to time of different speakers, and afterwards, I'll give you my verdict. Can I get you a drink? <laughs> blame it on the Henny, blame it on the Goose, got you feeling dizzy, blame it on the a a a a alcohol, blame it on the a a yeah, cause I got it like that, flow so smooth like I got it on tap. Yeah, and I'ma say it be a good night while I'm on my yingling, while I'm drinking Bud Light. Uh, can you get it when you miss me? Like I'm with whiskey, drinking Jim Beam. Yeah, baby, do you do it, do it that way? Do you do that? Do you take a ray? Uh, yeah, you know that I'm a beast when I kill it on the beach, like it's sex on the beach. It's like it's Malibu, take it to the California way. Cause we do it, yeah, baby, we can California K, like we on that. Uh, iced up, yeah, on the floor, get it mic'd up. I put it down like this, 24-7, let me have the fuck me to see Grim 7 night. folks. Of course, music recorded on my end, then played through your speakers, are not the best depiction of audio quality, hence my review here. Now to get this one out the way, the UE Megaboom, a very good speaker by itself, but when compared to the other two, does sound the weakest of them all, lacking in most sound characteristics that I'm about to discuss. The Extreme hands down provided the most fulfilling sound, richer, deeper bass than the Soundlink 3 and most other speakers on the market. But with its combination of forward and clear mids, the Extreme provides more immersion into each song and each movie that I've tested. Now don't get me wrong, the Bose Soundlink 3 is still a very well done speaker, but there is an enough noticeable difference when you compare the two in person. The Soundlink 3 sounds a bit more recessed, kind of like a glass ceiling if I can give you an illustration. It reaches a certain limitation. The one and only area where I did notice a slight downfall on the extreme, and it's very faint and very minute, I can hear the Bose Soundlink 3 providing a slightly better open soundstage. You can hear in songs and more so in movies where sound is coming from, more specifically from the front to back. An example when the chorus is heard in the back while the main vocalist is singing in the forefront. Or in movies when you hear shooting and explosions in the distance, this can be experienced more so in the Soundlink 3. But again, the extreme pushes everything else and gives you a direct feel and experience with the audio. I personally did not experience any distortion either in bass or any kind of tinginess in the high notes as well. The sound
sound signature I see as being very much fitting for all genres from rap, hip hop, pop, uh, EDM music, and down to classic rock. And I can say the extreme fills up large open areas, the best of the three here.